voice of mercy, breath of God, life from life sustaining us, earth below and skies above, beautiful redemption song. Melodies like morning rise, darkness leading toward the dawn. Into our sorrow sings the light, beautiful redemption song. Hallelujah, love is come. Hallelujah, God with us. Restored and death undone, beautiful redemption song. Weeping will not last the night, nor will sadness be for long. Joy was born of sacrifice, beautiful redemption song. Hallelujah, love is come. Hallelujah, God with us. Hope restored and death undone. Beautiful redemption song, beautiful redemption song. God is good. All the time. All the time. We're so glad to see you this morning. Welcome to those of you here and to those of you who are online. If you are a guest uh, today, please introduce yourselves to us, either in person or in the comments section online. Know that we pray that this day brings you some joy and some grace and that your faith is strengthened and encouraged as you live into the coming week. Again, welcome. Please kneel for a moment of silent prayer. Please rise.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. of Jeremiah. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their evil deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, and I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. The word of the Lord. We'll read Psalm 54, found in your bulletin in unison. Save me, O God, by your name. In your might, defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For the arrogant have risen up against me, 
and the ruthless who sought my life, those who had no regard for God. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. I will offer you a free will sacrifice and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from every trouble, and my eye has seen the ruin of my hopes. A reading from the letter of James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Of those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, 
What are you arguing about on the way? But they were silent. For on the way, they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a child and put it among them. And taking it in his arms, he said, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Teach me thy patience the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. In seminary, I had a class called Entrepreneurial Ministry. And here's the course description. This course teaches skills and strategies for creating new ministries and leading a congregation creatively and courageously. Pretty ambitious goal for a class. But to accomplish this, our professor incorporated something very unique. He incorporated improv training. So we had an improv teacher come in, and every time we would do improv together to help us gain skills in being adaptable in various situations. Now, if anybody's ever taken improv, one of the guiding principles of improv is this principle that says yes and yes and when doing improv with another person i had to receive what they said the yes and then roll with it the and me adding to what it has been offered then the other person would receive what i said yes and give their and. As you can see, this could lead to some creative and often funny outcomes. But if I didn't receive what the other brought, that is what is called blocking. And they would make a big X. And blocking kills the momentum and the possibility of discovery and creativity. Today, Jesus, we see, is wanting to teach his disciples. He is sharing with them a way of being in the world. But instead of saying, yes, and, the disciples block. Fear keeps them from receiving what Jesus wants to give them, what he wants to impart to them. In our scripture, it said, but they did not understand what he was saying And we're afraid to ask him. Now here's the thing about Jesus. Jesus does not seek fame or recognition. He does not seek to be the center of attention. What he is seeking is to teach his disciples. So that is why he is going through Galilee, avoiding the crowds. And what Jesus is teaching them is difficult to grasp. 
And this teaching is also very blunt. He is guided by the Father, and he will be killed by human hands. Hard to hear. Hard to receive. You see, those who set their minds by human understanding will naturally block the one who sets his mind by the things of God. The disciples hear Jesus' words, but they, the disciples cannot comprehend. Their thinking is set on human things. Their thoughts are on avoiding suffering and pursuing status. Since their focus is completely on themselves, they naturally are afraid for themselves. So they fear to ask Jesus about anything that might sniff of danger, that might take them away from their own pursuit or dreams of glory. So then we see them, they come to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent. For on the way, they had argued with one another who was the greatest. This in the house and on the way complement each other. The way is the following of Jesus, the action of trying to live the values of the kingdom. And in the house is the place where Jesus teaches and reflects with his disciples in private, helping them to go deeper, helping them to understand. On the way, they were arguing with one another, another who is about who is the greatest. They have no trouble quarreling among themselves, but with Jesus, it's very different. On the way, they were afraid to ask questions about the teaching of suffering, death, and resurrection. Now in the house, they become completely silent. Their silence, their fear, their arguing all block their ability to receive what Jesus wants to teach them. But here is the beauty of Jesus. Jesus can work through the block. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. Jesus sits down, gathers the twelve who will be entrusted with this way of being in the world. And notice that there must have been others there also because there was a child, right? And he's instructing them in the ways of greatness. For Jesus... The great are those who participate, yes, and with the loving energy of God. This love is not concerned with its own honor and prestige. Rather, it goes out to encounter all and lift up their basic humanity. When people align themselves with this love, they do not seek their own glory, but serve the real needs of others. How it is with God who is first and greatest should be how it is with all who seek to be first and greatest. Now, when a spiritual teaching like this is given to a blocking mindset, more often than not, the mindset transforms the teaching. <clears throat> Rather than the teaching transforming the mindset. So when the disciples hear this teaching of Jesus, it's easy for them to quickly flip it to their own purposes. They may think, okay, I have to go through a period of doing lowly stuff in order to get the higher stuff. 
if being a servant is the way to being first, what that's what I'll do. All the time they would be thinking, I'm better than these people. I'm serving, and one day everybody will know that. I'll have treasure in heaven. You see, the disciples struggle to let go of their own rendition of first. They just renegotiate their strategies about how to get to be the greatest. But Jesus gives them another way to proceed and models it for them. He places a child in their midst and embraces the child. And the child symbolizes the least. One who does not have social status, especially in that period of Jesus, or importance. You see, the world says the great of this world do not associate with the least of this world. But Jesus explains a path to greatness in terms of his own consciousness, his own way of seeing things. And how this way of seeing would then unfold in his followers. He is mapping for them a process of transformation. And if they embrace at least one in Jesus' name, a least one in Jesus' name, with his consciousness, that least one would become transparent, revealing Jesus. But this transparency would unfold into a greater transparency. Jesus will give way to the one who sent him. The disciples will begin with the last, but arrive at the first. Embrace the least, but welcome the source of all. When St. Francis kissed the leper, the leper became Christ. Before he kissed him, the leper was just a leper. It wasn't the fact of kissing that he became Christ. It is in the way of welcoming that Christ appears. And Christ always brings his father with him. So when we welcome Christ... We welcome the one who sent him. And why does this process begin with the least? Well, when we begin with the least socially, we say no to the hierarchical ranking of our society. And we say yes to the way of God. You see, those at the top are flooded with invitations to participate in this world. But those at the bottom are often and most likely excluded. They have nothing to offer, no possibility to pay back, and they are often not welcomed. But there is also another meaning to the word least. In this meaning, it can be applied to the socially least and the socially most. This leastness that is in all people is revealed by the type of welcome Jesus provides and encourages his disciples to imitate. The least means the bare, basic material that is common to all. It is beneath the accumulation of possessions and also beneath the lack of them. In gospel language, it means to welcome the Son of Man in each person. Rachel Naomi Riemann A doctor and spiritual teacher in the field of medicine tells of a workshop with Carl Rogers, the proponent of client-centered therapy. And so she shares this story, and she says, Roger began, and this is Roger was speaking, he said, before every session, I take a moment to remember my humanity. There is no experience that this person has that I cannot share with him or her. No fear that I cannot understand. No suffering that I cannot care about. Because I too am human. I too am vulnerable. And because of this, I am enough. She goes on to say that Rogers then began a demonstration. He engages one of the doctors and they began to talk. 
And here is Remans gives her impression of what she observed. She says, in the safe climate of Roger's total acceptance, he began to shed his masks, hesitantly at first and then more and more easily. As each mask fell, Rogers welcomed the one behind it unconditionally. Until finally, we glimpsed the beauty of the doctor's naked face. I doubt that even he himself had ever seen it before. And she goes on to say, I wish, I remember wishing that I had volunteered, envying this doctor the opportunity to be received by someone in such a total way. Except for those few moments with my grandfather, I had never experienced this kind of welcome. The doctor, you see, was usually welcomed in terms of his masks. And when they all fell away, what was left was the least, his basic humanity. And it was Roger's ability to welcome so thoroughly that allowed it to emerge. This, of course, is the breakthrough. The naked face of our shared humanity reveals the common source of all. This is what is most beautiful and most valuable. This is the greatest and the first. And at the same time, it is the least. When we say yes and to the least, we say yes and to Jesus. Yes and to God. Yes, and to the greatest and first in the least of these. Amen. Let us now stand and join together in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For the prayers of the people, we will use Form 3 found in your bulletin or on page 387 in your Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. For the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Province of Uganda. For the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Stephen's Huntsville and Trinity Woodlands. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Archbishop Justin, for our presiding Bishop Michael, for our bishops, Andrew, Jeff, Kay, and Hector, and for all bishops and priests and deacons. We also pray for our seminary, Elisa Stebbing, and her family. 
that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the re- Give to the departed eternal rest. Let life perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others, praying together for those on our parish prayer list. Chase, Donna, George B., Jane, Oliver, Peggy B., and Wayman. We invite individual intercessions and thanksgivings at this time, either silently, out loud, or in the comments. Pray for peace throughout the world, particularly in our own country. Pray for those serving in the armed forces and their families. Pray for the victims of natural and man-made disasters and for our first responders. Pray for our parish and her faithfulness to the mission and ministries Christ has entrusted to us. Pray for the children of the world who suffer and those who are alone and have no one to pray for them. Pray for the people of Afghanistan and Haiti. Pray for the doctors, nurses, and all who care for the sick and dying. Pray for the children in school, teachers, and those who work in our schools. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you. And then use us, we pray, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we We confess confess that that we have have sinned against against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through Jesus Christ our Lord strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Well, all right. Welcome once again. We're so glad to be able to be together and worship. Um, Once again, thank you for your generosity, for your gift and ministry of giving, which allows this parish to continue to shine the light of Christ, the love of Christ, into our community and into the world. So thank you. Um, Thank you, too, for continuing to wear a mask as that we, you know, everybody knows what's going on. Uh, name tags. If you want a new name tag, there's a QR code in the back of your bulletin, and you, it'll just take you right to the website where you can request a new name tag. You can also use that to also tell us anything you need to tell us or ask any questions. Our Bible study classes have started. Mine starts today. Um, so uh, 
you're welcome to join at any point in this because each one of mine kind of stands alone, but there's just a value in getting to be with others and have these discussions. I know Lizzie is good with you joining. Are, can they still join yours if they want to? Yeah. So, hey, you can just join right in. Because one of the beauties of these groups is getting to know the others in the group as well. So that beautiful dynamic of us and God being together transforms our hearts. So Deacon's Bob, Deacon Bob's funeral service will be September 25th. That's next Saturday at 2 p.m. And it will be live streamed on Facebook as well. Masks are required because there's going to be a lot of people here a number from out of town as well. So we're just for the well-being of all, we're going to require masks for that. Uh, each Sunday in September is the popcorn sales outside. You'll see a table for the Boy Scouts. So if you'd like to participate in that, then that's right outside as you're going toward Butler Hall. Uh, October 3rd is the Blessing of Animals. That's on Sunday at 2 p.m. That's also in your bulletin. So if you'd like to have your animals blessed, Please bring them by. Uh, there's coffee over in Butler Hall. So if you want to just get some coffee and just mingle and get to know some others, please do so. All right. Any birthdays or anniversaries? What do we have? Birthday? Birthday. Yes, that's right. Birthday. And anybody else? Oh, birthday. Here we go. Uh, let me look upstairs. Okay. And all of you online, if you have a birthday today, you can stand up where you are at home and we will bless you, or if you're having an anniversary, we want to bless you as well. So make sure I got everybody. Okay, good. Let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace, and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So happy birthday, happy birthday online. And we'll... Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Did I miss something? What? Oh, I'm sorry. We have the daughters. Sorry. That wasn't <laughs> not on here. But okay. Okay, backtrack. <laughs> now we have Jerry's gonna do the daughters of the king. So all right. Thank you, Father. <laughs> mm. That wasn't on here. <laughs> Each year we um, do a service of admission to the new daughters, to the Daughters of the King, and that's what we'll be doing this morning. This past week I had the pleasure, the blessing of um, doing blessing for new officers um, and rededication. So today we will be admitting the new members. If um, the new members can come up here, if the rest of the daughters will just please stand where you are. Um, as a sign of solidarity and, and unity with them, with the new members right here. And then we have a presenter. That's you, Vicki, right? We are gathered here in the sight of God and before this congregation to admit these women to the order of the daughters of the king. We commend them to your earnest prayers that they may have grace to fulfill the obligations of the order and that their labors may be to the glory of God and to the welfare of his people. And to you, I ask. The daughters of the king is an order for women whose mission is the extension of Christ's kingdom especially among women and girls, through prayer, service, and evangelism. Do you desire to become a member of the Order of the Daughters of the King? Do you promise to obey faithfully the two rules of the Order, the rule of prayer and the rule of service, to offer your support to the clergy for the good of the parish and the extension of Christ's kingdom, to wear faithfully the cross of the Order, and to work for its purposes as God may give you the opportunity In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, I receive and admit you as members of the Order of the Daughters of the King. And to the congregation, 
Will you support these women in their ministry of prayer and service? We will. Bless, O Lord, these crosses, and grant to your servants now admitted into this order such an abundance of your grace that they may wear this sacred symbol in the spirit of humility and with devotion to the service of the King of Kings. Amen. Accept and wear faithfully these crosses of the order, remembering the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, take up your cross and follow me. And in a moment, the daughters will say a prayer together. May your love, O Lord, help the daughters live lives of love. And may your holiness lead them to be examples of virtue, that they, strengthened by your Holy Spirit, may pray and serve you all their days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. If the new members will please turn around so that we can welcome you. <laughs> Vicki, there's a total of how many new members? Six. Six. There's a total of six. There's a total of six. <laughs> there are a total of six new members. Two may be online. Now, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of heaven. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Receive, O Lord, these gifts presented by your people for the work of your church. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament, and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. My flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed, says the Lord. My
join together in the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Almighty God, in union with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. As Jesus Christ has taught us, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. Since we cannot receive the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, we beseech you, O God, to bind us together through your Spirit. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, that we may become one body and one Spirit. May we live in you and you in us, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. This is our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.
forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.